I really do. There are people out there who are trying to tell me and others that when God restores Israel, He's going to make them keep the laws. And they're going to, if the, if the Israelite of the last day has any chance at all in going to heaven, they're going to have to maintain their salvation by works. And they also teach that Peter, the apostle to the Jews, had a completely different gospel, so-called, to the Israelites. Now, us Gentiles, we get grace. We don't have to do anything for our salvation. Israel does. That's what they say. They say that the gospel that Peter preached is works, do works, keep all the commandments, do good deeds, and earn your salvation. But you can't have it by grace. But that's not what Zechariah said. And that's not what Jesus said. The headstone is going to come forth, and he's going to be shouting, Grace, grace. In the two days, or the 2,000 years of this Gentile church age, some of you don't like this because you've got you've been told you've been told what to think. You've been told that if you don't think our way, you're not saved. You've been told that if you don't believe our eschatology, you're not saved. You cannot be part of us. Get out of here. We don't want you around. That's what you've been told. You've been told that the Gentile church is only established upon the writings of the Apostle Paul. That's what you've been told. You've been told to ignore the four Gospels, Hebrews, James, First and Second Peter, uh, First, Second, Third John, Revelation. You've been told to ignore those. You've been told that the church only listens to the Apostle Paul that all of our doctrine can only come from the Apostle Paul. Now, that's wrong in so many ways. But I'll give you a few examples of why that's wrong. He said, there's contentions among you. You're fighting. Um, verse 12, now this I say that every one of you saith, well, I am a Paul. And I of Apollos. I am of Cephas. You know who that is? Peter. And I of Christ. You know what he's saying? Some of you are saying, we only follow the Apostle Paul. He is our, he's the Apostle to the Gentiles. We only follow him. And then others saying, no, we only follow Peter. Peter was the, he was the head there. The, the, he's the Pope. We, we only follow Peter. Some of them were going, oh, no, we follow Apollos. And then there was the real spiritual group who were saying, we're of Christ, bless God. We follow Christ. I don't like fighting. I don't like, I don't like getting into arguments. I don't normally do it. 
I just, I avoid them at all costs. I like to come up here to my little room and talking to my camera and micro, my microphone and you sitting out there, I can't see you if you're mad at me, so just be mad at me. But Paul dealt with this issue about those who said that they were dispensed to Paul. And Paul was the only thing that built our doctrine. And Paul said, that's wrong. You, you're trying to say, well, we only follow Paul. You know, you, you have to follow Peter. You can't follow Paul. You can only follow Peter. That is unbiblical. And here it is again. We see in Ephesians 2.20, the church built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. The apostles, plural, not singular. Peter did not contradict Paul doctrinally. Neither did James. Neither did Revelation. Neither do the four Gospels. They don't contradict one another. They complement one another. Hey, that's a nice tie you have on there. Really? I like your hair. I like how it works today. They were complimenting each other. They don't contradict one another. How can it, how can, listen to this, listen to, listen to the words of our Savior. How can a house stand if it's divided against each other? How can the house of God stand if, as some say, these people can only be of Peter and these people can only be of Paul, how can that house stand? That foundation is divided against itself. That house will not stand. You know what? You want to get your doctrine out of the Bible? Get it out of the Bible. Get it out of Genesis. Get it out of Revelation. Get it out of the Psalms. Get it out of Isaiah. Get it out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Get it out of Hebrews, Romans, 1 Corinthians, Galatians. Get it out of Revelation. Get your doctrine from the whole counsel of God because that's what God's house is built upon. The sure foundation of the apostles and the prophets. By the way, included in that, the apostles, New Testament. Prophets, Old Testament. Look at that and say, I believe God says that's a camel. And I know for a fact that he never said it in his word. It doesn't exist there. It comes from the Kabbalah. Uh, here's another one. Uh, a book on mystical Kabbalistic magic. The energy of Hebrew letters. And the, all of these references are teaching you the exact same thing. That Hebrew letters have symbolism to them. And they have their own little secret identity and a secret idea and a secret doctrine that you would never know just by reading the Bible. You would never know this reading the English Bible. So it's a secret doctrine. Here is an article... Uh, from wikipedia.com concerning, and pull this up here, what's called the linguistic mysticism of Hebrew. Kabbalistic thought extended biblical and midrashic notions that God enacted creation through 
the Hebrew language and through the Torah into a full linguistic mysticism. And this, every Hebrew letter, word, number, even accent on words of the Hebrew Bible contain esoteric, which means secret, meanings. I did a Pastor Mike online here a while back called Why I Am Not a Jew. It's now being posted all over the place that I am an anti-Semite. Anybody who knows this ministry and knows what I believe and what I teach about the nation of Israel, you know that's not true. But they're just taking a little portion of this. Some, most people haven't even watched it. They say, well, I'm not watching that. Because someone posted it and said... Here's, here's my lunacy, I'm an anti, I'm anti-Semitic, which is not true. But I'm telling you something about the Jews that the Bible says about them. They rejected the Messiah, they are half blind, I'm going to show you scriptures here in a little bit. The word Elohim means plural majestic magistrate judge. Kings were also called Elohim, along with anyone in great authority. Now listen to what he said. You don't get anything out of the words Lord and God. You don't get anything out of that. If there were one thing I could change among Bible translations, it would be this. Leave the names of God in the original language so we can know what the words mean. And by that... He's saying that you break down the individual magical, mystical teachings of the Hebrew letters themselves. Because his doctrine and the doctrine of uh, the Kabbalist and all these other practitioners of witchcraft are telling you that each Hebrew letter has a magical, mystical, secret meaning behind it. that's not in the Bible and if you want to know the real secret then you've got to know what that list is you got to know what that is Israel doesn't get saved with a separate gospel. That's, that's wrong. And they said, is this Naomi? I like this because, oh, you get this picture. We have Israel being taken out of the land and now hooking up with uh, the Gentiles. Now she's coming back into the land. So the, the promise is being not only, not only being shown here, it's being fulfilled here, and it will be fulfilled completely, totally in the last days. They are going to come back to that land and inherit that land. If they don't, God's a liar. And if God can lie to Israel about the, the physical land that he promised he would give them, then why should I think he would keep his promise to me about the heavenly land that he's going to give us? I mean, they, they're all packaged together. Either God's a liar or he's not. And I just don't like calling God a liar. It's like real dangerous. 